That's a lot of dirty water. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Been a while. I'm Ben with Mechanized Cleaning Solutions. And today we are going to be unboxing a brand new MITM, MITM Corporation. What is it? An HDS 3008. That's a eight gallon per minute at 3000 PSI hot water machine. Brand new. Just came a couple days ago to our equipment supplier and they dropped it off by forklift along with along with a whole bunch of bleach. We got uh, we got a lot to do. That's all sodium hypochlorite right there. 10 barrels brand new plus a couple we already had and a bunch of surfactant which we're running through these uh, Comet P40s now for soft washing. Yeah, I got, uh, I kind of gave these little Comet P40s a try and they're awesome. Um, they weren't quite right when we got them owing to this proportioner valve situation there. I had to make a couple changes. Now, these damn things are a fire hose. Man, you can bleach a whole building really fast with one of these, these little gas powered soft wash pumps. There's another one right there I got. Let's go ahead and went two of them. Anyways. <clears throat> Lots going on. We're, well, why haven't I been making videos? Well, you've been way too busy, way too busy. You know, we kind of told you guys what was happening last year when we were getting involved with all this new work out at this one organization. Well, that whole thing's expanded and uh, not quite done yet. A year later, we're getting pretty close to locking this deal down with these people, but uh, we picked up some other stuff. We're running operations seven days a week now. I've been working more or less 70, 80 hours a week for the last year, and I've just been no time for YouTube videos. But we hired a bunch of people. We took on some truck washing stuff. Cool, we're washing trucks now on the weekends. So now we, uh, we're running multiple crews and they're overlapping through the week and on the weekends, and it's like seven days a week now. So it's just like a different thing. We basically in the last year, more or less doubled or maybe a little bit more our annual revenue. And the reality of that increased workload has just been crazy. I, it's just been a blur. But now that one of our, our first guys that has been with me for the longest is our operations manager now. So we have help, we have two managers now. Me, in addition to our admin and support staff, which is kind of run by my wife, she handles all the office stuff. She's got some help now in the office. And uh, me and Russell are tag teaming our management operations. So we have these crews, these two-man crews. Uh, they all have different schedules, but they're like set schedules now. So it's just like a different thing. And it's very exciting, but it's just been a lot of work. So that's the reason for the big blank spot. But what I'm hoping is that now that we have some help, you know, in management, and my schedule should come back to something that looks like a normal more or less five days a week that's going to be a little while I'm still going to be working seven days a week for a while but um oh maybe over the next few months I'll get to have a life again after 10 years of just putting my head down and getting through this and I'm super excited but I'm super jazzed to open up the new hot water machine uh the reason we haven't bought a new hot water machine for Man, it must have been 15 years. And uh, this thing right here is the same as that right there, only that one's been modified. You know, this one will not be modified. This one's gonna go in the back of a great big uh, 2002 Sterling. And that machine is gonna be dedicated to truck washing because we just need to have an extra machine. Now that we're running up seven days a week, if something breaks, there's not really a lot of time for me to get it fixed in time to keep things going. So we need to have some extra equipment so that, you know, a piece of equipment can be rotated out while repairs are being done and we can still keep things moving. But that truck right there, we've had for a long time, that big white Sterling, that's a, uh, a 33,000 pound 
the service body truck, or the gross weight is 33,000 pounds. It actually weighs about um, probably like 16 or 17 empty. But this used to be a 60 foot bucket truck uh, that had a great big giant 60 foot boom lift on it. And we had a company take that off and that truck's just been sitting there. But that's gonna turn into a dedicated truck washing truck. And what's interesting about the truck washing thing that we're doing now, and the reason why we picked this contract up is that it's it seems to be problematic for a lot of it we don't we don't really specialize in truck washing and there are companies around here that do that and uh you know it's very competitive and they do these trucks like super cheap but you know it's a weekend thing it's for a giant fueling company there's like 50 or about 50 of these trucks there and you know each one takes an hour to recover but once you get them under control and they're you're keeping them clean and doing them every week i think we get them down to about maybe 20 30 minutes a truck and uh but it's there's 50 of them they're spread out over three different yards all over seattle tacoma all over the place and there's no water at two of the yards and it has to be full reclaim and they don't want any acid washing done so all this stuff conspires i think to make it so the companies that are normally doing the truck washing are kind of like, well, not the most responsive and not the happiest about it. And this big fueling company, or big worldwide multi, multinational, multi-billion dollar company, well, I guess they've just been having a hard time. We've done spill cleanups for these guys in, in the past, quite a, quite a bit of uh, pressure washing, cleanup work for them anytime a def truck or spill some fluid or maybe a diesel truck had a hose pop off or they'd have a little accident. They'd call us up and we'd go out and clean them up, clean it up for them. But they called me up and asked me if I wanted to do some truck washing. And I was very honest with them and told them, we don't know much about it. We're not good at it, but I'd give it a crack. And, uh, you know, they laid all the logistical difficulties on me. And I just was like, you know, I don't think there's any way we're going to be able to do this for what the companies normally like to do this. And uh, we gave them a proposal that was just... Well, it was commensurate with the challenges that the customer imposes on it, you know, and uh, they went for it. And it turned out to be really awesome for us. I mean, just like, like a deal, dream come true. Difficult, but it's kind of like uh, in keeping with the way we like to do things. You know, we don't really do all the low hanging fruit. We just like to do all the difficult work um, that a lot of companies either can't, want, can't do or don't want to do, or it's just, you know, kind of a pain in the butt, but that's kind of where we specialize you know being reclaimers um uh, but the, the benefit of that is that we specialize we tend to get really good at doing difficult stuff but then we also get to charge what we want because we don't really have to worry about other companies out competing us because we're you know by the time somebody calls us it's like <laughs> there's not really that many options left and that was kind of the situation with this so we set it up where we thought it'd be really good for us. And they were like, Yahoo, that looks great. And I was like, really? And uh, it's just been awesome. We've been doing this for about two, three months now. And it completely smoothed out our finances and it's a bunch of money. And it just like got, it took all the stress off of payroll, paying the bills every month. And uh, it's been really awesome. So super excited, a lot going on. Not only that, this thing we've been working on with this tech company is coming to fruition. And uh, we're getting ready to, uh, well, I'm going to have some really good news here in about three weeks. So super excited, super optimistic, and, uh, you know, just feeling like whew, all this hard work is really finally starting to pay off now. But that's what's going on. Um, Got to get a few things ready, get ready to bleach down a bunch of apartment buildings next week. Next couple of weeks, actually. And that's what all that sodium hypochlorite's for. We're going to blast through that in like two weeks. And um, so, you know, we're not even the, uh, we're not even the major bleaching people around these parts. You know, everybody around here likes to soft wash houses and stuff like that. But in the commercial world, contractors generally shy away from it because the oversight and the regulations of stormwater, way more heads up, much more likely to get caught. But since we have vacuum support, we can go and bleach all we want and uh, keep that shit out of the storm drains. And so we get lots of work that way. It's really great. So vacuum work is the future. That's what I'm telling you guys. Getting vacuum reclamation support. If you do that, if you get, like I've been telling you since the beginning of these videos, if you can get your finger on this problem and you can figure it out, man, the world is your oyster. Okay, that's enough me blabbing. 
Let's get into this unboxing. I'm super excited. The first brand new hot water machine I've picked up in like 15 years. We just haven't really needed one, but um, our business has just taken off. So let's get this thing opened up and have a look at it. All right, guys. Let's see what we got here. Not for sale in California. Okay. That's because California's full of cunts. And it's run by cunts. Okay, let's see here. Anything interesting other than that? No, okay. Crack this baby open. Brand new HDS 3008. multiple times that, in my opinion, MITM Corporation makes the best hot water machines. They're the ones I always like to get. But really, there's not a big difference between these and the ones that Hypertech makes. I have noticed that on some of the Hypertech models, I don't know if it's still the case, at least some of the ones I looked at a couple years ago, the build quality, you know, it's all pretty much the same as Mighty M, but the way that Mighty M, or sorry, Hydrotech, constructs the coils, the burner coils with the stainless steel, it was uh, a little bit thinner gauge metal. And a buddy of mine who runs a eight gallon from it at Hydrotech that he's had for a long time, years. You know, there's just like little metal studs that are welded to the frame that you bolt the covers down to that's kind of all rusted out and came apart. And uh, you know, the mighty one, the mighty M ones we have didn't have those problems. A little bit thicker metal, heavier, but um, my coils aren't falling apart, rusting out, all that stuff. So I tend to. Uh, Stick with these Mighty M ones. Really nice components. Everything's super burly. Well, looks like they give us a little half inch pressure hole. That's a bonus. Instead of the 3 8 I've never ran any half inch pressure holes. It's always a little bit big and industrial. But uh, nice to have one. Uh, they make different models and with different engines they'll put Kohler commands in these and uh, Honda engines are real hard to get a hold of right now they're um, in short supply and uh, I didn't want anything but a Honda engine so we had to wait a little bit longer for the manufacturer to get us one with the GX690 in it of course that'll come in 
way handy later. Later, when it comes time to maintain this thing, this machine, I'll keep this running for at least 15 years, if not longer, because I know I'm inside and out. And they're very, very easy to work on once you understand it. Now let's have a look here. So it looks like my DM sent out a dual lance gun. One of those, uh, we, don't, we don't really use these things. They're kind of can be good for parts. And the pistol grip. And what's interesting is I've never seen this before. This big ass, heavy, thick, half inch pressure hose with a gun screwed right on the end of the line, which doesn't make any sense to me. But it looks like they're also sending out a G, uh, DG 5010 general pump pistol grip. And they have a high pressure swivel on it. And uh, let's see, what is this? This is a new style of gun. I've never seen these before. It's probably a. Uh, I'm trying to read the pressure rating on this thing. It's a 5,000 psi rated gun. So a little bit overkill on this thing, but pretty cool. We got some documentation. We got. Uh, the oil burner manual, you guys saw we did a video where we uh, cleaned out one of these burners and serviced them. These things are awesome. Very effective and reliable. There's the manual for the Honda engine. And then this is uh, Mighty M's operator's manual for the whole, the whole skid. But there's a little envelope in here with something in it. I'll try to see, see what this is. I'm not sure what this is. O-rings for one quick connect. Oh, they give you a couple extra O-rings. That's interesting. Which we have tons of those. Okay. Let's go have a close look here. And of course, we're going to have to make some changes to this machine. Right out of the box. They're not the way I like them, but with a few minor modifications, they can be made to be just the way I want them. I've got a couple of keys here for the engine. Chemical straw. Give you some nice eight gallon tips and stainless steel holders. You got the uh, GFCI box power reset. That's just like basically a, a quick uh, fuse reset, choke, ignition. You got the auxiliary power, which is supplied by the built in generator, which is right there. And we also got our burner switch and an hour meter and our fuel tanks. And our high pressure out is right there. Around the back side here, or around the left side, you can see the uh, gasoline and diesel tank. So the engine, of course, is powered by gasoline, and the burner here is fired by the diesel fuel. And then this is the water inlet. So this is like a little mini float tank. There's a little toilet valve in here. And uh, water comes in there, and it automatically fills up and shuts off. But they give you an option to uh, draw from a different water source. So you have a three-way one-inch ball valve here. And the way this works is this is the line that supplies the pump. And if you go and you say, put this valve down here, or sorry, up like that, then you could draw water through here, which this will get connected to a big giant bulk thousand gallon water tank. So like I said, this skid is gonna be dedicated towards truck washing. And like I said, two of those sites don't have water, so we're gonna be bringing bulk water. So like uh, you saw that one trailer, I'm sure you've seen videos of that hot water trailer. That's the same situation. There's the skate on the front of the trailer and a little 200, bulk gallon, 200 gallon bulk water tank right behind it. Well, this is gonna be the same situation, but it's gonna be in the back of the truck with a thousand gallon water tank so they can go work most of the day, wash all those trucks without having to leave and go get water because what we're doing right now is we're kind of limping through it where they go to one of the yards which is down in Tacoma and uh, they'll take 500 gallons of water with them 300 gallons in the back of a truck and then an additional 200 gallons in the back of a water tank that's on a trailer and then they can work for about two hours before they'll run that out then uh, the guy in the truck's got to leave the trailer will kind of work for another hour off that 200 gallon water supply and then hopefully the guy in the truck gets back with more water before they run out that's the way we're doing it. 
they won't have to do that now with this new system once I get it built out and get that truck built out. So that's all exciting. I'm gonna make things a lot easier on us. And uh, the only other thing I'll have to do to this, other than adding in the water tank and building it out on the truck, is I'm going to add a ball valve right here. This is the unloader valve. This is how you control the pressure and also the bypass. So right now, when you're not spraying the trigger, the water goes in a circle. And then this is the return line back to the pump. So it's drawn water from here for the big water tank. And then whenever you're not spraying and your hand comes off the trigger, the water gets bypassed back to the pump at low pressure and it stops drawing water out of the tank and the water's just going in a circle. But the problem is that water can heat up really fast if it's not done right. And then what'll happen if you're sitting here and you let this thing run and bypass, it's just idling and you're not spraying, then eventually that water will get really hot and this little relief valve here will blow open and start venting steam. And uh, it's a this is a protective device to keep that from causing a problem, but uh, that's just not the best move. What the best move to do is, is to Add in a second line here with a three-way ball valve that you can just change. So instead of bypassing back in a circle, all of a sudden you redirect that bypass water back to the clean water tank. So the pump is drawn. When, when you're not spraying, what's happening, instead of the water going in a circle and getting hot, you're drawing clean water, clean cold water out of the big tank, goes to the pump and gets sent right back to the tank. That keeps everything cool and this thing can run all day long without overheating, without the pump head right up there that brass thing getting real hot and melting seals and blowing that steam relief valve open. It can just run all day long. In fact, it can actually function like a generator. You can just run this thing all day long, bypassing water in a larger circle, staying cool, and you can use the generator to power something. So very capable machines with a lot of functionality that allow you to get a lot of work done. And these things hit like a truck. When you spray eight gallons a minute at 3000, you know, you've, Probably all had your little gear drive machines on the ground, but when you have these big commercial schemes, they, they actually put out a little bit more than what they say. These things are awesome. Great machines. Fantastic, look at that. Brand new shiny stainless steel. Now there is no difference between this machine and that machine. This machine looked exactly like this a long time ago before I made it look like that. And all I did was because these things have to go clean parking garages, like I said before in our equipment tour video, you stick that in the back of a truck, that burner is gonna be too high. You know, you can imagine in the back of a truck in a parking garage, the top of that burner is gonna be right below a sprinkler head. So everything's been lowered down over here, but this machine will not need to go in parking garages. So I don't have to go and build another skid for it. We can just leave it like it comes right out of the factory. Oh, and also, I forgot to tell you about the little detergent knob. This is for introducing detergents. It works like a downstream injector. However, uh, this is connected directly to the pump. So you would drop this straw in a chemical bucket or a bucket of soap or bleach or whatever. You wouldn't want to use bleach. Open this valve, and then anytime you're using a low pressure tip, like a black tip or a soft wash tip, and you're not working at full pressure, then you get a Venturi effect and you can siphon soap. The problem with that is, unlike traditional downstreaming, where you're just running soap through your gun, that actually goes through the pump. So you have to use pump-friendly detergents that aren't gonna uh, bang up your seals and your packings, or not, or not uh, eat up your seals and packings because it's really caustic or acidic. So we don't generally use these soap knobs unless we want to for some, unless we're using some kind of like very mild detergent, we always just use regular downstreamers on a pressure hose. All right, that's what that is. All right, guys. Awesome possum. Talk soon.